this is Mark Peterson with the Frog Outside the Well Research Center, and today we've got a very special uh, presentation. We are interviewing the winner and one of the second prize winners of the Los Angeles Shijo Contest, Daisy Lim. Is that the way you say your name, Daisy? Uh, Lim? Yeah, Daisy Lim. Oh, you say Lim. You, that's an Americanized pronunciation. I'm used to saying Im in Korean, actually. Welcome, Daisy. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, it's nice to meet you, too. And also, <laughs> winner, second prize, is Chuck Newell. Now, Chuck, I've, I've met before. He went on a seminar with me to Korea and is an active uh, teacher of uh, uh, Shijo in his uh, literature class in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, Chuck, tell us about the name of your school and, and what you teach. Okay, I teach uh, at Notre Dame High School, which is uh, obviously the, uh, the local Catholic school. Um, and I've taught English, mostly senior English, uh, there for about 20 years. and. Um, Every year we work in Sijo poetry and along with haiku every year and enter, enter different poetry contests. Good for you. Uh, Daisy, what's your background as far as uh, uh, profession and schooling? What have uh, you done? Well, I'm an editor working for um, a pharmaceutical test preparation company. I got my MFA in creative writing from Kingston University in London, and um, I've sort of always been a casual writer. Um, and I like to write Sijos. Well, congratulations to both of you, and let's go over your shijo. Uh, would you like to perform your shijo in English for us, Daisy? Sure, sure, sure. Um, okay, uh, it doesn't have a title. Um, cold moon cold, blank white gleaming, on full nights I see your edge. One smooth arc, silver circle, night sky, night light, dreamer's bed mate. Cold moon cold, you social distance, earth buddy, you do it right. Very nice, very nice. You are really a poet, are you not? You do some creative writing, some poetry. Yeah, so for my MFA, I did focus on poetry um, and really enjoyed it. I do, I do quite, I really like form poetry. I like following um, formulas and that sort of thing with my poems, so the seizure kind of fits in perfectly. Uh, have you done uh, haiku? Yes, I have. Um, I have can't say I've really done it as uh, an adult. It's definitely something I did in high school. You know, in, in my creative writing class in high school, it was definitely part of the curriculum, but I, I can't say I've done it so much as an adult. And the shijo that you wrote for this contest, is this the first shijo uh, that you've published or worked on? No, um, it's the first one that's been seen by anybody, but I have definitely written shijos before. Chuck, uh, let's have you do your poem for us. Could you, do you have yours there, Chuck? Uh, I do, yes. Also untitled, In the east the sun rises, it melts away the morning dew. In the west the sun sets, the last warmth of day fades over the hill. This is how I mark pandemic time. The day, the month, matters not. Capturing the moment, capturing this pandemic yes. era we're trying to live through somehow. Have you uh, published any other Shijo heretofore? I've had a few other poems, but never a Shijo. But you've been teaching Shijo for a while. Right, about seven or eight years, I believe. Daisy, tell me, how did you come to uh, enter the contest? You haven't entered the Sejong contest, but you entered the LA contest, right? Yeah, um, so I had no idea that there were even contests for Shijo. So KCCLA um, is a, um, I follow them on social media. I take Korean language courses with them. So I just happened to see them post uh, this new contest that they were having. So, um, and I'll probably join the Sejong contest when that comes around again. So uh, Daisy, you're Korean American. How much is being a Korean American an advantage to you in learning Shijo? You didn't grow up with it, did you? No, I did not grow up with it. I discovered it uh, during my MFA research. Um, so I, I don't know how much it, being Korean American has benefited me um, in that sense. Uh, though I think maybe being a poet and having studied poetry may have influenced that a little bit more. Good. And uh, Chuck, you're going to keep entering again and keep encouraging your students to enter? Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, again, uh, like you, I find it a really rewarding experience, almost kind of uh, a meditative experience, uh, just to focus on a poem and sit down and, and try to put images and words together to create meaning. And uh, Now, you've been associated with the uh, Sejong Cultural Society. In fact, they have a video of you teaching that people yes. can log on to and use to learn how to write a shijo. You're one of their resources. 
Uh, but how did you find out about the uh, LA Korean uh, Cultural Center's uh, uh, contest? Well, I think it was because of you. I think I'm, uh, since we've worked together in the past, I think you put something about it on social media somewhere. And I go, okay, well, again, during the summer, <laughs> during the pandemic, uh, again, it, it helped me pass the time, right? And, and so, uh, again, I'm, I'm glad I entered. We really appreciate the LA Cultural Center doing this. Uh, is this Shijo business that we're trying to do, that the three of us are involved in, and others who have entered the contest, is it, can we call it a movement? Is there a Shijo movement in America? What do you think, Daisy? I, I want it to be. I would say that I want it to be, but I do think that um, I don't know very many people personally who know about it yet. Um, but I, I do tell my friends, you know, I told a lot of my friends to enter this contest. So um, I think you were saying earlier, it's, it's in a sort of pre-movement. So hopefully we can, we can push it beyond that. Mm -hmm. That might be a good thing. Maybe we're not quite at a movement level. What, what do you think, Chuck? Would you call it a movement yet? I, I think it's getting there. Um, again, I'm, I'm in little bitty Chattanooga, Tennessee, teaching um, mostly non-Korean students how to write uh, Korean poetry. Uh, the teachers I've worked with who also teach it, there's, and we talked about the Elizabeth Jorgensen from Wisconsin. There was a teacher from Colorado who had several uh, prize winners. Um, I can't think of all the other states. There seems, when you look at the prize winners, they, they come from, you know, all over the country, northeast, southwest. So I, well, I think it's gaining momentum, yes. And when you look at the uh, winners, at their names, you can't always tell who's a Korean American and who's not by their names. But uh, Daisy, Daisy Lim is in the minority as far as being a, a, a Korean involved in the Shijo uh, contest because most of the people in the contest have Anglo or Hispanic or uh, even Chinese or uh, Japanese uh, non-Korean uh, names. Let me ask one thing, to make it into a movement, to grow to a movement, I look at uh, haiku. I'm very jealous of haiku. You know, there's a Korean uh, uh, saying, my cousin bought some land and I got a stomachache. And, and I feel that way about haiku because here I'm this Koreanist and I want Shijo to have the success that haiku has had. Well, what would each of you say about the relative success of haiku? And is that a role model that Shijo can follow or is following? What, what do you think, Daisy? Um, I definitely think so, uh, especially, you know, Korean culture in general is having a big boom. You know, K-pop is a huge thing. Korean food, just the culture in general is having a really big um, movement, as, as you might say. And I think that um, following that, you know, Sijo might also become a very popular part of learning about Korean culture. You know, Chuck, I see haiku in every school. Uh, my students that come to me at the university, I ask them if they've studied haiku. They've all studied haiku. I was at a restaurant the other day and I was talking to uh, somebody about uh, shijo and haiku. And uh, I said, you know, everyone in America has studied uh, haiku. And the people at the restaurant, there were some Koreans, some Americans, they said, no, I don't think so. And I said, yeah, watch. And I called the waiter over. <laughs> so ordinary, you know, Joe waiter, and I said, hey, when you were in uh, uh, grade school, did you study haiku? He said, yeah, we did haiku. I said, did you write one? He said, yeah. And I said, could you recite it for me? He said, oh, no, no, that's been 100 years ago. I couldn't do that. And he left, uh, you know, waiting on another table. He came back a few minutes later and said, I remember it. <laughs> and he did his haiku <laughs> from the fourth grade. <laughs> and I'm jealous of that. Uh, I'd like to see Shijo get to that level. What, what do you think, uh, uh, Chuck? Can, we, can Shijo ever get to the haiku level? Maybe. Um, well, uh, confession here, my, my gateway into writing Shijo is to first teach students how to write haiku. And we, we look at traditional uh, Japanese haiku and just talk about how it's a uh, three-line form based on imagery and maybe we write a haiku and then we take that haiku and we turn it into a sijo. We add more depth and detail. Yeah, and that's the, good. That's the a good twist way to do it. And, and the twist at the end that the haiku doesn't have. I, I guess haiku's advantage is it's, it, everyone knows, you say 575, everyone knows haiku and it's, it's short and to the point. Uh, I think probably 
95% of the haiku that people write probably are not really correct haiku if you want to <laughs> be technical about it. Maybe. I, th I, I like it because I have the advanced students, the older students in high school, and they've done the haiku. So th the CJO is, is a better challenge for them, especially my, my advanced students, my honor students, my AP students. They really latch on to the, to the CJO. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to both of you, and let me congratulate both of you again as winners and as good representatives of the Shijo movement yes. or the Shijo pre-movement, whatever we've got going here. But uh, let's help spread the word and uh, see if more people can't catch on to the joys and the beauties of Shijo along the way. So thank you both. And uh, I'll sign off here. This is Mark Peterson with the Frog Outside the Well Research Center, thanking our two winners and thanking the Los Angeles uh, Korean Cultural Center for yes. sponsoring this uh, this contest and helping to spread the word about uh, Shijo in America.